Join the New Zealand Alpine Club today and be a part of New Zealand's proud mountain community, supporting adventure since 1891. Membership benefits include discounts at our extensive network of huts nationwide. A range of courses and learning opportunities for aspiring climbers, led by the country's best instructors. A subscription to The Climber, New Zealand's only magazine devoted to climbing, as well as the New Zealand Alpine Journal. Travel insurance options allowing for climbing and other adventure activities not covered by standard policies. Perfect for your next adventure abroad. Plus, New Zealand Alpine Club membership also grants a variety of discounts at ski fields, climbing walls and outdoor retailers nationwide. Leadership and community for all who enjoy and wish to protect our magnificent crags and mountain spaces. The New Zealand Alpine Club, a voice for New Zealand's mountain lovers. Join us today. For more information, visit alpineclub.org.nz. This week's special book offer is for the North Island Rock Deluxe Climbing Guidebook. This is the perfect companion for climbers on the North Island of New Zealand. With climbing now being allowed at Alert Level 2, be sure to make the most of this offer and enjoy some great climbing across the North Island. Offer ends at midnight on Thursday the 21st of May. Buy the award-winning Auraki Taupotini Guidebook for $45 and save $25 compared to the usual RRP. This offer ends at midnight on Thursday the 14th of May. Good evening, Angie. Nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, good. Good. And uh, what an amazing film. How, how, I mean, how awesome to have such a cool film made about you. Yeah, it was pretty cool. The whole thing was pretty uh, great experience. Oh, I, oh, I bet. <laughs> hey, uh, we're, we're going to go through some just kind of quick fire questions and then we're going to maybe do a few longer ones. If, does that yeah. sound good? Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, awesome. So, so where are you? Where are you from originally? Um, so I was born in Canberra, um, and then when I started climbing, like when I started climbing a lot, um, we, we kind of came to the Blue Mountains for the climbing, um, and because it was just such a beautiful place, and it kind of offered everything for the family, we decided to move up here. So yeah, cool. So that's where you are now. You're in the Blueies. Yeah, that's where I am now. Cool. All right. And um, uh, some of these questions, of course, will, will be um, pretty obvious to anyone who's just watched the film, but we'll kind of <laughs> we'll stick with it. Um, now, in terms of when you started climbing, obviously super young age, like when when was it again? So I started climbing when I, well, I mean, I've always been climbing. Um, <laughs> I guess there wasn't an age I started, but when I wanted, when I kind of decided it was something I, wanted to really do was when I was seven um, because I my sister was a swimmer and I was was really not into that so I kind of wanted to find my own thing and I was always climbing things and um, I had an accident out of a tree um, and my mum was kind of like I'm sick of you climbing the door frames and the doors and the cupboards um, and I don't want you to get hurt again so I would take you to a climbing gym and that's how I I kind of started, yeah. Classic. I mean, uh, I think that that experience might be common to a few people watching the film. So that's <laughs> so that's that's how it began. You were climbing trees, you were climbing the walls, literally. Yeah. And then Mum just took you to the gym instead. Yeah, I never. I, I to be honest, I didn't know climbing was like a, a thing. Like I didn't know it was well a sport. Really, I kind of just thought it was like a, a fun activity that you should do. Um, but when it, when I kind of realized that it's actually a really, you know, like you can take it really seriously, that's kind of when I got really excited about it and it was something I really wanted to do. Cool. And clearly you've taken it very seriously. <laughs> yeah. Far out. I mean, some of the climbing in the film is like 
that's next level. I'm oh man, I was stoked watching it. Um, and so how does it compare in Aussie to climbing in Eora? Um, how what, what's it like for, for me? Yeah, to like because you've got sort of the sandstone right in Australia, yeah. and then really super hard limestone mm. over, yeah. over in Eora. Yeah, it was. I honestly, I had no idea what to expect. Um, I had never been bolting. Actually, this was like the first time properly bolting. So I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I didn't know a lot. I mean, I had watched some films prior to going, so I, I kind of knew what the area looked like. And um, But I guess going there, I just, like, I didn't realise how amazing and how much potential um, there was. Um, and climbing on the rock, is it's so different to anywhere else I've climbed in the world. I've climbed many places in the States and Europe and it's just really something completely different and I guess it's not just the climbing it's amazing it's the whole kind of like being on an island in the middle of nowhere it's all just a really cool thing to you know it was just really cool for me and um, cool it is it the setting is it the setting of your own roots as well like both yeah. your own climbs is that kind of an inspirational part of it too yeah I guess like I think what a lot of people, maybe people who haven't bolted before, don't realise, or I was especially one of them, is that it's not like when you look at a roof, it might look amazing from the ground. Um, but then when you kind of go up and fix a rope and you come down to look at the climb, it could just be a whole other thing. So it's quite hard to, um, to kind of be very tough in the head because it's quite annoying when you have to, go up and put all the six bolts in and then you realise it's not going to work so you have to go back up, take all the bolts out and um, it's quite a lot of work and I think in the film it kind of shows, you know, like a few days of me bolting but it was so much more intense than that and, you know, I had like allergic reactions to the glue and um, it was just so intense, the whole experience um, and it was a lot more happened than what was in the film. Sure. All right. So I, I guess as well as being that kind of, it's not quite trial and error. Like you got to look at a cliff and get inspired and, and see the potential, right? I guess there's a bit of creativity as well, right? Do you? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Cool. Ah, mm. And it's, it's, it's awesome to see like not only young people bolting and, and sending really awesome climbs, but I have to say it. Why? Why don't you think there are so many? Uh, there aren't so many female climbers bolting bolting routes. Um, I think there are barriers I to it. I think um, maybe I don't know. I never really saw. I don't know. It's not really. I wasn't like, oh, I don't know if I can do that because I'm a woman. Like, but I never thought of it like that. But maybe I don't know. Maybe women feel like it's more of a male-dominated thing, or they'll be criticised or maybe, you know, for bolting it wrong or something like that. Um, I think women always try and, you know, like they're always trying to explain themselves and um, and I think maybe that could be a reason why. But I think it's an amazing thing, women or ma male, and I think, I think it's a great thing to get into and it was, I think, an amazing thing for me to start early on because now I know that that's definitely something I want to continue doing. Cool. And clearly you're really good at it as well. And and sorry for having to make you explain yourself. I feel like a bit of a bit of a jerk now. Oh no. No, Maybe. It's, I think yeah, I think it's um it's important for women to know that um, you know, things are changing and times are changing and you're not gonna be judged for something like that. And I think it's an amazing thing to do. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, it's, it's an inspiring message, I think, regardless. And, um, and so for anyone out there, <laughs> they're probably <laughs> probably inspired uh, seeing you, um, especially at a young age as well. I think that, that's another outstanding feature. I, I have to ask as well, um, so what your family over in, over in Tonga, they seem pretty, pretty excited and pretty stoked to have you there climbing. What do they think of climbing like as a sport though? Like do you think of... Yeah, I don't think they have any idea what was going on. I think, okay. um, I mean, the only climbing they've ever heard of is climbing coconut trees, really. Um, so it was 
very different for them. And I think, um, but it was really nice to, to meet them because I'd never met them before um, and to kind of tell them about these amazing cliffs that they don't even know about. Um, it was quite cool to kind of meet, you know, family you've never met before. So that was nice. Yeah. No, I bet. <laughs> what an experience. Um, and now I understand you're possibly gearing up for the Olympics next year. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was. How's, how's that going to change your, your climbing and, and how do you think it's going to change climbing like as a whole sport? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I had a lot planned for this year um, with my outdoor climbing and my indoor climbing. Um, indoor climbing had just recently come into my life. So, um, it was quite disappointing for me because I had worked so hard to transition out, um, sorry, indoor climbing, and then all this happened and it just kind of threw me back a lot. But in some ways I can kind of see it as a positive, or I'm trying to see it as a positive because um, now with the extra time I can kind of um, get used to indoor climbing a bit more and because it's so different to outdoor climbing, I have more time to get the experience. Um but it definitely has thrown my plans back and it's very disappointing, I think, for everyone. Um, and as far as what climbing will look like after all of this, I have no idea. I mean, I have, I've heard people talking about, like, only being able to use liquid chalk and, you know, having to bring a new rope every single time and just crazy ideas of what it would be like. So um, I hope it's not too different. <laughs> Yeah, and I aim into that because <laughs> I think that, that those sorts of things might affect anyone wanting to to go to crag, the busy crags, go to gym, yeah. you know, all these sorts of things aren't just going to be an issue at the Olympics, eh? Yeah. And um, now I imagine you're probably on a pretty serious kind of fitness program. What are you, at do you the moment, like? yeah. <laughs> at the moment, not really. I'm kind of... Because I had trained so hard for so long, well, for, for me it was for so long because I'd never trained that hard. Um, but for a couple of months I was training so hard and um, I went to Austria and I was, I was training there and because um, it was so intense, when I came back it was kind of nice to have a little break and I was meant to reach my peak um, when I got back, which was in March, um, and I did and then I had no competition to compete in. So I'm just kind of letting my body like go back down so I can start training really hard again once the gym's open um, and everything starts up again. So at the moment, my training plan's all over the place. Yeah. What were you yeah. doing, though, building up? Yeah, um, b building up. To like when, go you, when, you, when you were doing the really intense training, like what, what was the mm -hmm. sort of stuff you were doing? Is it just, is it just uh, to climbing? Is it running? Is it swimming? Like, um, well... Is <laughs> yeah, a lot of climbing. Because I'm not so good at speed climbing, because it has nothing to do with outdoor climbing, and I am originally an outdoor climber. Um, lead and bouldering are not so hard for me to get used to, but speed is just like a whole new thing for me. Um, so I had to do a lot of leg exercises, which is really hard for a lead climber because I think lead climbers have really small bodies, um, especially small legs because you kind of need to be really light and small so you can um, last longer on the wall. So for me that was quite hard, you know, having to do all these leg exercises that I'd never done anything with my legs <laughs> yet. So, so I'm right in thinking you have to be able to do all three at the Olympics, right? It's not just like a pick yes, and choose. I yeah, no, you have to do, for, for this Olympic round, you have to do all three, um, but for the following after that, I think speed will be an optional one outside of, um, so it will be bouldering and lead together and then speed as a separate um, discipline, which is, I think a lot of climbers like that idea. Yeah, especially me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I imagine it's pretty pretty weird after <laughs> you climbing Tonga versus doing this kind of speed climbing business. It's pretty yeah, different it's sport, different, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's different, but I think it, it's different things to love about both. So, mm -hmm. and are you like, do you have to? I, I presume you've got a pretty full on like nutrition kind of program as well. You're watching <laughs> what you eat and all those sorts of things. Yeah. Have you been able to slacken off on that a bit in the last few weeks? Yes. Yeah, I, it's it's going to be hard for me to come back because I'm just 
um, well, obviously trying to keep as healthy as possible, but having a few sneakies here and there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bit of chocolate snuck its way into the... <laughs> yeah, but I think it's all right. Sure. So I'm thinking everyone else is doing the same. I'm hoping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. That's what I heard. I heard they're all doing that. You, you, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so... I don't know how much you've you've had to do with the New Zealand Alpine Club before, but like we've got a pretty major youth climbing. Well, it's, it, I say major for New Zealand. It's major, and, and it's it's growing, and it's like full of a bunch yeah. of super tight kids. And, and I guess a, a few of them um, will be watching tonight. And what have you, what would you say to them? You know, what would you say to the kind of you know, people coming up from from maybe a slightly different path where you know they're starting in gyms and and, and that yeah. kind of thing. Um, well, I think getting outside. I think probably the best advice I would have is to not not plan your climbing career if that's what you're wanting to do so much. I think the best thing that ever happened to me was just going along with the flow of everything. Like when I was old enough to start doing comps, I started training indoors. Like that was just a decision I made overnight. Um, and I think it's really nice to to do climbing like that because climbing – you know, there's so many different ways you can climb and so many different, I think a lot of, I think it's different for New Zealander kids because I think um, they have a lot of outdoor influence. Um, but for kids in Europe, I guess it's a lot of the time they usually start indoors. Um, and I don't think either is n- uh, not a good one to, to kind of do. I think you can do both and um, some people think you should just do one, but I really think both can really go well together. So, yeah, just kind of um, let things happen and not be so stressed about planning everything. Cool. Good advice. And um, what's the chance of us seeing you over here? Do you got really? any plans to come to New Zealand? Yeah, for group? I do have some plans of going over to New Zealand and um, some climbing, some stuff over there. So, I uh, with Wiz. So, I don't know if you know Wiz. He's really strong New Zealander climb and um, I'm hoping to go over there with him. Cool. All right. I'm sure he's got a few few projects lined up for you to for you to <laughs> pick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I do warn you though, it's maybe not quite so dry and warm as Australia or Europe, yeah. but you know. Yeah, I have been s- on his roof, all good. Which is super cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm super bad at it. Stick to climbing. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. So, what are your plans for for future trips? Like, you know, what's a dream a dream trip for you? Um. Well, I really, I really do want to make it to the Olympics. Um. I guess because also because it's dragged on for so long. Like, I want to mm-hmm. go even more now. Um. And even doing more bolting trips. Um. Around even Australia, I think. Um. Because New Zealand and Australia is so far from the rest of the world, like it's quite um, hard for us to go anywhere. So it'd be really cool to get some things developed even here in my home. And it'd be really nice, I think, because I travel so much in my climbing, it'd be really cool to do some stuff here as well. Cool. Were any of the crags that you go to often affected by the fires earlier in the year? Yes, um, a lot, almost all of them actually. Um, so they were closed off for a long time um, so to let the plants grow again. And um, But I think mountain people are very used to it because it happens every few years. Um, it's just part of life in the mountains. So, yeah. I guess a good, a good motivation to explore some new places as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Cool. All right. Well, I, I suppose um, we should let you get back to it we'd like to say thanks very much angie for for joining us this evening apologies we weren't able to introduce you before the film um no, it's fine. we had some technical problems but um yeah i really appreciate you taking the time and um thank you thanks so yeah much.